The first speaker is Dr. Anna Maria Artner. She's a political economist, senior research fellow at the Institute of World Economics at the, uh, at the Center of Economic and Regional Studies. She's also a professor at the Milton Friedman University in Budapest. She has studied imperialism. Uh, I'm sure something that Milton Friedman does not agree with her uh, uh, views or her topics of study, but she has studied imperialism, the transformation of the world system, global capital accumulation, labor markets, crises, and their socioeconomic consequences. Her recent publications are uh, A New World is Born, Russia's Anti-Imperialist Fight in Ukraine, Samir Amin and the Changing of the World, um, Planning and Social Change, uh, Can China Lead the World? These are just some uh, articles of hers that have appeared in International Critical Thought, in the journal Critique, and in Third World Quarterly. So, Anna Maria, please uh, go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this uh, uh, event. And the uh, questions what Radhika have risen are very complicated and very numerous, so I cannot answer all or the aspects. I have prepared a PowerPoint presentation and I will try to uh, answer some of the questions which uh, which have been uh, uh, raised. Do you see my presentation? Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I, I am starting. Okay. So um, I will uh, uh, touch two questions. Uh, one is the economic impact of the war, and the second is the consequences of uh, of the uh, role on the region's international uh, position. So, first of all, um, I think we should be aware of the characteristics of Central and Eastern European countries. They are what I call integrated periphery of the European Centre, and they are characterized by. Um, smaller firms, weaker competitiveness, openness to the world market and dependence on Western countries, particularly on Germany. Because of their geographical proximity and historical economic uh, connections with Russia and Ukraine, the Central and Eastern European countries have been dependent on energy imports from Russia and exports to both Russia and Ukraine. The cheap energy in the Central and Eastern Europe has been a key factor uh, for investments of German companies in the region. As far as the industry is concerned, the fall of the export of Germany to Russia uh, due to the Ukrainian war has been compensated by the rise of its exports to CEE, uh, which destroys or, uh, or risks the markets and competitiveness of the companies in CE. So it is also a consequence of the peripheral position of the region. Because of the geographical location and the importance of agriculture, the issue of Ukrainian grain exports hit the CE countries. Probably you are aware of it, the, uh, this problematic, the Ukrainian wheat, maize, rapeseed, and sunflower that was said to be delivered to uh, poor African countries stuck in CEE and has been sold there, uh, and it caused a, a problem for agriculture in Poland, Hungary, Slovakia, Romania, Bulgaria. Uh, uh, furthermore, uh, through their affiliates, cent Central and Eastern European banks are relatively great, uh, have a relatively greater exposure in Russia and Ukraine than uh, the Western banks have. So some see uh, economies are more vulnerable to external shocks, more inclined to inflation, and more dependent on foreign capital resources like credits and structural funds of the European Union and the foreign direct investments of uh, Germany. Some illustrations uh, about what I said. You can see here uh, the increase in the share of, um, <clears throat> uh, of firms reporting losses in percentage point. And uh, you see uh, here that the, these are mostly the, the um, Central and Eastern European countries uh, uh, whose firms were uh, badly affected by this uh, uh, conflict uh, uh, by, uh, due to the higher energy prices and suspension of exports to Ukraine, Russia, and, and Belarus. 
And here is the, uh, the slide from European Investment Bank, I mean the, the, the figure from European Investment Bank, which symbolizes how much Central and Eastern European countries, the firms in these countries have been affected by the war due to higher energy prices and suspension of exports to Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus. And the next one is a, is a figure, a map, uh, <clears throat> made by uh, European Investment Bank, which shows that the periphery of uh, the European Union, uh, the firms in the peripheries of the, of the European Union are more, are more vulnerable and have been badly affected by the war, affected by the war. Uh, the synthetic uh, vulnerability, which awaits uh, free sources of firms vulnerabilities like reduction in exports, lower profits due to higher en energy prices and difficulty in finding funding as uh, banks avoid risks. So all these factors that the synthetic vulnerability is more characteristic for Central and Eastern Europe and the Southern periphery of, 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 in the, of the European Union. So, uh, however, I would emphasize the asymmetric interdependence between Central and Eastern Europe and Germany. The German economy has been built on free lakhs, cheap energy from Russia, outsourcing to Central and Eastern Europe and exports to the world, but after 2008, mainly to the East, mainly to China. As a mirror, Central and Eastern Europe had been built on cheap energy from Russia, um, on FDI from Germany, and on exportation. So it means that the, the, these two um, entities are strongly interconnected, but in an asymmetric way. But we can underline that if uh, uh, Central and Eastern Europe declines, declines Germany too, and vice versa. So I think we must evaluate the impacts of this war uh, in this context. And now something about the inflation, which was already mentioned by Radika. It has grown much faster than in the Eastern Europe, in the region than in, in other uh, European countries. This has evaporated the purchasing power of wages so that the population of Central and Eastern Europe suffered more than the people of other member states of the EU. Well, uh, to continue, the government policies applied in connection with fueling war or to mitigate the negative effects of sanctions were like uh, increasing military spending, subsidizing fuel prices, costs of accommodating refugees, investment in energy security, increasing interest rates to curb inflation and so on. So all these uh, policies uh, increased government spending and this can result in a growing public deficit and indebtedness in the near future. Although this problem hasn't appeared yet as this slide shows, uh, this, uh, for example, here you see that um, uh, the quarterly government debt um, uh, between the last um, quarter of 2021 and the last quarter of 2022 decreased in most of the countries of the European Union, including Central and Eastern Europe, also Czechia and Estonia have been uh, 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 affected badly and uh, performed, performed uh, badly in this respect as well. And here you see the, um, the trend in the government debt, and it is also declining more or less. Of course, further analysis would need. Um, as a response to the inflation, central banks of the region have raised interest rates. This curbed investments and lowered economic growth, as this uh, figure shows. Central and Eastern European countries can easily get into a downward spiral, I think, a, rush, a vicious circle. Uh, but I would add that it is particularly true for Germany and because of uh, Germany, uh, and because Germany uh, uh, as its competitiveness will decline in the absence of the Russian and maybe the Russian relations. So if the, if the German competitiveness declines, then uh, this vicious circle can uh, um, uh, reach Germany as well. Here you see another figure concerning the, the GDP growth in the region, and you see that more or less the, com the countries well had some kind of uh, positive growth on, uh, on in, in a year, but uh, uh, Estonia and Lithuania had been bad, the, the most uh, uh, 
a serious situation concerning this uh, uh, this figure. So uh, the long term uh, the long term contracts on gas will expire in Ukraine, uh, and Ukraine has already. Sorry for that. I am a little bit exciting. So the long term contracts on gas from Russia will expire. And you know that the gas, is, the gas is coming through Ukraine. And Ukraine has already indicated that it doesn't want to renew uh, these contracts. And this would mean a serious uh, shortage in Eastern Europe as well as in Germany. In this context, the strategy of the Hungarian government is an excellent one, since it could provide gas by avoiding Ukraine through the Black Sea and Turkey. This is the so-called Turk stream. Uh, and lastly, I would return to the consequences, the broader consequences on the region. Uh, well, on the one hand, there are changes that has weakened the European Union. Beside the question marks about the future of the German economy, an, incre and, an increased division and tensions among the CE countries work against the European cohesion. The traditionally good Polish-Hungarian connection have deteriorated and the Visegrad whole cooperation has been frozen. Despite the military cooperation, the relationship is also tense between Ukraine and other Central and Eastern European countries because the Ukrainian wheat exports or the minorities in Ukraine or the celebration of Bandera as Radika mentioned. Um, Poland is trying to strengthen its regional role, while Hungary attempts to keep and even strengthen its sovereignty regarding many issues. On the other hand, Central and Eastern European countries' reliability on the European Union funds has grown. The countries can be blackmailed into following the policy of NATO and European Union. Hungary is a textbook example of this situation. The imperialist forces of NATO and EU want to demonstrate with Hungary that no one is allowed to deviate from their command. This attempt of the European Union and NATO strengthens the EU. So we can say that by the war, a Polanian double movement has been reinforced in the center of imperialism. Today, the Hungarian conservative government is the only outright opposition to the war uh, and it is try trying to maintain its policy of opening in its foreign relations and to establish friendly relations with every country in the world. We can say, strangely enough, that the Hungarian conservative right-wing government is pursuing a kind of Vendung spirit policy, which was formulated in 1955 in the final declaration of the first Asian African conference in Indonesia, Bandung. The declaration said that all nations and people have the right to self-determination, non-interference, and peaceful coexistence. So I think the region is at crossroads, a, a choice between neoliberalism, West imperialism, dependence on the one hand, and the East or multipolarity, sovereignty, and finally socialism. If CE economies ignore the international cooperation and uh, are left out of international cooperation and infrastructure project of Eurasia and Africa, the most dynamic regions in the world, if they close their eyes to the expansion of BRICS, Eurasian Union, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Belt and Road Initiative, and so on and so on, the, the deterioration of their competitiveness and the fall of the standard of living of their population will be inevitable. So my last word in um, this issue is that uh, also the EU seems to be united. This is a very fragile and superficial unity. It is based on the dictatorship of the political elite of the European Union that serves the imperialist interests of the United States. With the awakening of the European population that will happen by the fall of their living standards due to the rise of a multipolarity in the world, the inner forces of imperialism within and between countries will clash. This will take first the form of a national fight 
for sovereignty uh, on an international level that will make the evolution of a class struggle at national level possible and will open the way to socialism. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm Michael Hudson. I'm appearing here for the International Manifesto Group. If you like this video and want to like it, please subscribe. For more information, go to the address on the screen.